So tell me where do we begin? We start with the failures in the end. Or do you have a burden that pretends? See, I know like me for you, it all started with a dream. To reach the skies that they showed you. But they never mentioned the humbling fall. Was ambition you said? I can testify it wasn't, because you've let us get to know you. So no one can ever say you never risked it all. And as we tell this story, not history, your story, the story you've let us tell, because you let us in, from the beginning to the end and everything within. I hope that you know that every day is an adventure with you and for the bold ventures that you see through. Actually, I'm head to toe in 21 Couture. Gotta represent, right? <laughs> My store is actually located in Raymond, Alberta. So that is 20 minutes outside of Lethbridge um, in a small town. Uh, I started the business in 2020, smack in the uh, pandemic. So it was pretty new to me. And, um, but I decided to jump right in and thought, now's the time to start a business when everyone's at home, not shopping. <laughs> But it really turned out very well. It was actually a really great time to start because everyone was starting to shop online. And so my online store started to take off. Um, I now run a brick and mortar store uh, where p women can come in and check out what we have, try on things and be a part of our community. Hey, my name is Felicia Bamey. I am the owner of 21 Couture Boutique. It's a fashion and lifestyle boutique clothing store. Um, we have everything from clothing, accessories, purses, bags, shoes, uh, and gift giving items. Yeah, I think those, you can't go wrong with those as a gift. People are going to ask you where you got that again. Anytime I bring those for gifts, people come back and they're like, would you, where can I buy that again? <laughs> when I started the business, I kind of hummed and hawed if I wanted to because a boutique is something that is um, pretty popular. There's a lot of them around. So I kind of was nervous to start my own just because I wasn't sure if people would show up. Um, but then I quickly realized that I do have something to bring to the table that most of the boutiques don't already have. Um, I love that I'm originally from Toronto. So what I bring to the table is my unique um, urban flair. Um, I bring just something a little, I like to say a little bit of spice to the clothing world. Um, typically we have um, statement pieces that women can add to their closet that they don't typically already have. Something to maybe add a pop of color, something to add a little bit more, like I say, flair to their outfits. So we provide just unique items that women can't just buy at your typical boutique, boutique for women to wear, as well as we have practical pieces, like things that women can wear to work, like a beautiful blazer, or we have, you know, different sizes um, of articles like jeans that fit different women's body shapes. Um, so I think that we bring a unique um, element to the boutique world just because they ain't never seen anyone like me, so. <laughs> Yeah, we just like to be a little bit more unique than your average boutique, so. So this space, funny enough, um, came about because we were talking to a friend and telling her that we needed a space to house um, all of our inventory, somewhere where so all of our friends could come and try on things and feel comfortable and take their time sh and shop. And so this space came available. It actually um, was one unit and the owner split it in two so that they could have um, another rental space and so we quickly decided that this was a space for us and that we wanted to be here permanently so that people can find us and come in and shop with us. So I would say people before I started the boutique have always complimented on how I put things together. So I was like, you just make everything look good. Like how do you do this? And I wanted to show them that um, it's not necessarily something that um, just happens overnight. You have to take time and you have to be precise about how you want to put your things together. So with me growing up, 
I always been into fashion. I got my fashion sense from my mom. She's someone that loves to shop. She has her closet overfloweth with clothes. And so growing up watching her, how she put her things together, I was always inspired. Um, and I think I just took that with me and decided when I was opening a boutique, I don't want it to be just a regular boutique. I want it to have that extra oomph that, you know, you don't see in your typical department store when you're in the mall shopping. And I also want them to feel welcome and feel like they're in the right place. And luckily I've had people come in the store and express how much they appreciate me being there. They tell me, please don't ever stop this. This is so great for the community. And I think they just love the spirit of it and how they feel when they walk in. And that's very important. So, so mostly we like to carry basic pieces that women can take and kind of layer on top of that to make their own. We like to show people that different ways that you can wear items. So we'll take one piece and we will show many ways to style it. That's kind of what we do on our social media, just to give people ideas on how, you know, they can take something and make it a whole new piece every time they wear it. Um, and our store is unique in the fact that we love, we pay attention to detail. So we love different um, patterns. We love different textures in our pieces, but we also don't want you to take something and bring it home and just leave it in your closet and forget about it because you're so overwhelmed with how you can style it. So we like to show women that there's different ways you can wear your clothes at, in different settings. So we do offer um, style appointments, one-on-one -on -one appointments where women can come in and, you know, we, we like to give them the vibe that they can take this piece and make it unique. And um, we really do things like that to make them feel like, you know, they came in for our help, but really they left with their own confidence that they can take these pieces and make it their own. So, yeah. My greatest accomplishment so far has been um, just the way we've been able to make people feel. And we know this is true because they tell us every time they come here how much they love having us here. And we want to just exude a spirit of self-expression. We want people to come here and feel like themselves and be able to shop and find pieces that make them unique and show their personality. So I think my biggest accomplishment is just making people feel good. Oh, that's my favorite piece. Okay, so I really love this jacket that we had in store. It sold like hotcakes and um, I'm really glad that I grabbed one for myself because it's, it was a really popular item. Um, another favorite piece of mine, let's see, there's so many to choose from. Um, I'll go with this skirt right here. This skirt is really nice. I love it because it's a classic jean skirt that can take you through all seasons. You can dress it so many wear ways and it's very practical. Um, it's something that you can wear casually or you can dress it up and make it a little more spicy. So this is one of my favorites. And um, as you can see, it's gorgeous. This one right here, very fancy. Definitely my style, love the gold on it. Yeah. So usually when we come in the store, we like to make sure the store is nice and polished, clean. We love a good smelling environment. We want you to come in and be like, ooh, it's nice in here. So our goal is to have a nice, well-maintained space, as you can see. Um, and then we get to our orders. Usually we'll check to see if there's any orders that came in overnight. And so we'll go through that, pack up orders, get them ready to ship or for local pickup. Um, and then after that, we just love watching the locals come through the store, check out all that we have to offer and vibe with us. We love seeing familiar faces, but we've also been really happy to see some new faces come in and feel our atmosphere. With my store, we bring a sense of I want to say community because when people come in this, the door, they feel comfortable to, you know, maybe talk about their business. They feel comfortable to come in and ask for a collaboration. Some of our top and favorite collaborations that we've done so far is with the people of the community. We've done things like um, hygiene drives where we were able to give back to those 
in our community that are less fortunate and in need of help. So those have been some of our favorites. Also, it's been really nice to collaborate with um, other like-minded individuals that have the same drive as well as the same um, thought process so that we can collaborate and make this place a little bit more better and just a lot more of a fun atmosphere. One thing that we like to do every year around the holidays is a hygiene drive, which is where people in the community can come in our store and they can bring donations of different things that might be um, necessary for those that may be homeless, those that can't afford. So we do a hygiene drive where people come in and they bring in things like toothpaste, toothbrush, anything that's hygienic that we could give back to the community. And every year it actually gets really big. It gets bigger and bigger. And um, we're always surprised by all, like everyone bringing in their things and just the support that we get from the community is amazing. So we do a lot of drives. Um, we do clothing drives for people to bring in their gently used items, blankets, anything like that where we can give back. Um, we like to do things like that, so. Um, for me, business is so, it ebbs and flows, right? Some days we're just like, I can't do this. This is too hard. I don't know if I'm qualified. Um, and every time I say that, it's almost instant that I get this sense of reassurance that we're needed. People want to see us flourish. Um, I have women come in the store and they're like, you're doing such amazing things, not just for you, but those that come before you. And I think that that's something that has stayed with me for a long time that I could reflect on. I'm not just doing this for me. This is not just fun and game. I don't wanna be here just to look good and dress up. I want to make an impact for those that came before me and those after. Um, and especially like my children. I have a daughter that is nine years old and she every day wants to come to work with me because she, she just feels like this is so great that you're, my mom has a store, that she's helping people. And so I feel like I'm a big influence on not only the women that come into our store, but also the children that look up to us, little black girls that are just like, this is amazing. I can't believe you have a store. Like I get students that come in my store all the time and they're just so fascinated by the thought of this business model that a black woman has come up with. And I just, I adore it. I really love being in this position. Well, on my spare time, I do mostly nothing. <laughs> just because I'm a busy mom of four and the store gets busy. So by the time I go home, I'm usually chilling out. I like to draw myself a nice bath and just relax, lock my kids out and just take care of me. Self-care is very important to me. So I do a lot of things like my own nails at home. Um, I like to do skincare and make sure I feel great and look great. I also work out a lot. Um, I feel like that gives me those happy endorphins and keeps me smiling. <laughs> Number one um, thing that inspires me is my family. Every day when I go home to them, I'm thankful that I do what I do because it gives me time freedom so I can spend my time loving on them. Um, and I keep them in mind because I want them to live a happy, good life. And if I can provide that for them, I'm gonna do everything I can. So I think they're my biggest inspiration. But other than my family, my biggest inspiration is those that have come before me in the fashion industry, those that have taken the time to do the work and the research. Um, I don't take that lightly and I feel like I learn a lot from them doing that. So. The thing that I had to overcome the most is um, I feel like the finances, trying to find resources um, and to, to build a strong budget that, you know, will help sustain the business. I think that's very hard for someone that, you know, didn't really grow up with a business background. I didn't really have anyone to turn to. So I feel like the challenge is, is trying to maintain um, the business as best I can and find the different resources that are out there that may not fall into my lap, but they're out there. And I think the challenge is just trying to find those resources. As a black woman in entrepreneur position that I'm in, I feel like we're overlooked a lot. You know, people don't typically come to us for resources. Um, people don't typically share their ideas with us. I feel like 
you know, when we're starting, we're starting from the ground up because there's not a lot of people to look up to or ask questions, especially in this area. So sometimes it's challenging because you don't know where to start and you feel like, you know, you're wasting so much time, time trying to learn it on your own if only you had someone to talk to and run ideas by. So for me, the hardest part is um, just the community, having more people like me to, you know, just express different challenges to or ask questions. Um, also, I feel like uh, we just get forgotten about. Like people just don't remember that we we have things that we can contribute to the community. And um, that's why I'm here is just to open the doors of opportunity for those that look like me or that, you know, are inspired and want to start a business, but they don't know how. So I'm here for all of it. The most fun thing about running a business is being able to pick and choose how you want to represent your business and also adding fun aspects to it. Um, I like to take my staff and we like to go out for dinner. We like to have movie nights. So I like it to feel like it's not super like a stuffy environment. So we're always laughing, joking. We really love to do Instagram reels. So that's fun for us, just creating different videos and we like to add humor to our um, advertising and stuff. So I don't know, we just have fun. It's always a good time around there. So. What's, your, what's the best part about working with Felicia? Definitely how organized and committed she is to bringing something special to our little town that no one else can. So our game plan for the next two years is, it's gonna be very important because we're in the middle of a rebrand we want people to really feel what we're trying to portray. And so we need our brand to be top notch and feel exactly what we are trying to portray. And so in the next two years, we're going to be rebranding a bit, um, bringing in some more variety like menswear. Um, in the next little while, I'm looking forward to just building more connections. I'm a people person, so I feel like the more people I get to know, the happier my soul is you know you never know who you're going to meet out there so i just want to have strong connections and friendships and um i think also probably i hope to have a bigger facility one day to be able to house more products and to sell more to people and bring in things that they love and sometimes that takes growth so if we could grow more as far as having bigger spaces, um, more help around here, that'd be great. That just shows you that you're doing something right when you're growing. So I'm looking forward to growth. Um, right now we're a small little boutique in a small town, but I want to expand that. I would love to uh, have a storefront in different provinces. And um, I don't know, I just want to help the black community become a little bit more financially free. And um, I just want to contribute the best I can. That's really my goal. Personal challenges. Um, there's been many doors that have closed in my face, like shut in my face. And I think it, uh, it goes for personal as well as business related. You know, there's always going to be a time where things don't work out for you. You might have had this big plan drawn out, looks beautiful on your vision board, and then something happens and God said no. So you know what happens? You just knock on another door and someone friendly opens and there you are. You got your foot in the door. So for me, it's um, always trying again when I feel like I failed. I'm always optimistic that things will work out and, and they typically do. These episodes as 21 Couture, but we recently rebranded to 421. So the reason for that rebrand is, um, you know, as you get into business, you don't really grasp the things that it takes to run a business, what it takes to get up every day and be, become the business. And being in business for three plus years, we start to get to know ourselves, we start to feel ourselves and get comfortable. So we changed the name to Core 21 to um, embrace and embody change and growth as, um, as people. And um, we wanted to incorporate things like wellness, things that we can do to help everyone in the community, not just women and grouping and creating. So uh, the change signifies um, growth and 
collaboration. That being said, check me out at 21couture.com and thank you guys for this opportunity. It feels really nice to be surrounded by a bunch of like-minded people who understand the struggle um, as a black entrepreneur and what it takes to really get up and grind. You really don't know what that looks like um, otherwise, so I'm grateful for the opportunity. We you um, I think I tell my younger self, don't be scared, right? The things that you fear are the, actually the things you need to lean into because if you don't start now, then someone else is gonna do it. And if not now, then when? So I would tell my younger self to definitely just lean into your fears and because it's gonna be okay, you know? Time will reveal your resources and time will show you that with with consistency you can do great things so yeah i just wouldn't be so afraid to do it on my own because look at me now we're doing well <laughs> i'm just asking you all to show up bring your friends pull up we want to see more um people of color out here showcasing um the things that they've received from the community that um you know that black people or anyone of color that has created something we want you guys to help us represent um you know when you're you're out somewhere with your friends you you want to call on them to help you you do that you call your friends so i'm calling you guys out to come on and support us and also if you're if you're possibly starting a business do it now's the time so I just want everyone to come and please support our businesses because we don't plan on going anywhere, but the places that we are planning to go, we'll get there faster if you guys all help and join our community. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm Felicia Bamey with 21 Couture Boutique. I really appreciate this opportunity from BIPOC Foundation with the Bold Ventures to showcase our businesses. And I just appreciate it and I'm happy to be here. It's Felicia, and I hope you guys catch the next episode of Bold Ventures. Uh, oh, hi, welcome, come on in. <laughs> Do you want me to put your stick? I shout out before you look like me. bed? Um, I could probably do like 145. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> I, I lost my train of thought there, so. Um, yeah. The thing they don't know about me is I actually find it so fun to work and I'm kind of a workaholic. <laughs> It, I work throughout the night, all day, every day, nonstop because I eat and sleep and breathe this business because I love it. It's so fun for me. This is Felicia, and I hope you guys catch us in the next adventure of Bold. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me say that over again. You're doing great. <laughs> okay.